so hello and welcome back to my channel yeah you're not seeing my face you're seeing uh backyard i am out in the country kind of unexpectedly kind of a spontaneous trip to go visit family and today it is 4 34 a.m june 20th 2020 Anyways, we're just driving down the street here because I want to see the sunrise. You can see it's already pretty light out. So the sun is set set to rise at... No. Anyways, the sun is set to rise at 5.06 a.m. I don't know where the best place is to even see the sunrise. I'll unroll the window so you can hear the birds though. Anyways, it's winter, it's winter, it's summer solstice, so it's the longest day of the year and a couple years ago my husband and I got up and watched the sunrise and same thing, it was at like 5am, 4.58 or 5, whatever, so very exciting, um, I don't do it every year, I just thought it'd be nice and then I was going to read my Judy Bloom Summer Sisters book, like just at least start it today because I still have to finish Becoming by Michelle Obama, which I'm on the third part. I am driving west and the sun rises in the east. Well, I can turn around, I think, on this road and get a nice spot. I could watch it from the window of where I'm staying, the front window. I'm up in the loft, like above the garage. But the sun, it wasn't the perfect view, it was a little off to the side. And I was thinking I could go down here to this area where it's kind of clear, but there's just like one house here. And I was like, I look like such a creeper at 4.37 in the morning, just hanging out with this one house with my vehicle pointed at it. But I kind of want to get this view right here. When my husband and I did this a couple years ago in Fort McMurray, we found a place and we actually got to see the sun like cresting over the hill, which was really cool. Not sure if I'll get that here or if I'll have to wait for it to peek over the trees. I got up and I was trying to be so quiet and sneak out this morning and my sister-in-law and my sister-in-law was up. So I was like, I'm just sneaking out for a minute. <laughs> so awkward, like 4.30 in the morning. Why are you sneaking out? I got distracted by talking to you. I think if I back up and pull along the side of the road here, I can see the sunrise from there, just off to my left, because I am now facing east. So it is now 5 a.m. and that sun is supposed to rise at 5.06. So we'll see what I can see because it's through trees and not straight on the horizon. Which when my husband and I did this a couple years ago, you could see it like cresting over the horizon, peeking over. It was so beautiful and just something that happens like every single day. There's a little robin. But it's just, I don't know, beautiful. Those power lines over there. That one is like conjoined twins at the hip and they are holding hands and waving their other arms and they are wearing witches hats and I cannot unsee it now. It's a weird tower. Yeah, that's just what I wanted to update you on. I'm in the van and it's a bit chilly but I turned the van off. I had the window unrolled but I had to roll it back up because the mosquitoes are out even this early. But I'm really enjoying the sound of all the birds chirping and everything. We'll see if they let me go back to sleep for a little bit this morning. Okay, now it is 5.05 .05 and that sun is supposed to peek over that horizon in one minute. You guys, it's already June 20th. It's already summer solstice. This is the longest day of the year and I think after this they start to get shorter and shorter. And I just love our summers here because... Like, the weather hasn't been great lately, but technically today's the first day of summer. So I'm like, I guess it does typically rain a lot in spring anyways. But yesterday was pretty hot. It was plus, like, 20. And it was warm, and I was out with my best friend and my kids and my nieces, and we were out at the park and stuff, and it was really hot, and we went for a bit of a walk and stuff like that. So it was really nice. That was Friday, and Thursday it was really nice. And Wednesday it rained, like, all day and was a lot cooler. 
but Tuesday had been hot and stuff like that, so it's just kind of that time and the weather's a little bit all over the place, but more consistent. Anyways, it's summer now, and it's June, and the year is half over already, and it's been, like, 2020's been so crazy, and everyone's talking about how crappy 2020 is, and I wouldn't say 2020's been the best year ever, I don't, I don't know, it hasn't been crappy either for us, but just with the quarantine and everything, obviously, it's been a very different year for everybody, but my life is kind of boring anyway, <laughs> so I don't know. I didn't have any travel plans or anything. If you had travel plans and you had been planning something for a long time and you had, like, flights booked and stuff like that, that would really suck. We did travel to Arizona in February and that was really nice and thankfully we were able to get back before the quarantine hit and we didn't have to isolate or anything and thankfully we were all healthy and well because it happened, like, right after that we got back, like, just the very end of February. My other travel plans was just to go over to BC and visit my mom and stuff like that, which I can still do now. Because it's not, like, I'm tr I'm crossing a border, but it's not, like, Canada into the States or anything. It's just Alberta into BC, but it's still kind of iffy to do it right now. But a lot more things are opening up, like, they're opening up parks and stuff like that. And more services. I was at Walmart yesterday and I saw the nail service going. But you had to wear, like, a mask to go get a manicure. But And I know my friend had, like, a massage booked and things like that. So, uh, more and more services are open, so... I'd really like to be able to go to BC. I went to BC four times last year to visit my mom by myself, and that was really awesome. But it's been four years this month since we went to BC as a family with the kids and everything, so I don't really want to go. It's hard to tell, and I can't zoom in, but I think the sun is cresting, like... Oh, I can't zoom in. It's not the best quality. I'm just on my phone, like usual, but... It is now 5.08, so it should have peaked two minutes ago over the horizon, so I'm not, like I said, I'm not in the best spot, but I think I'm going to head back to the house, though, and see if I can catch a little bit more sleep. There's my sunrise on summer solstice. I found the sun. Just peeking over those trees now. Hi, and welcome back to my channel. I wanted to get a little bit of a different view background here, so I'm in my front yard, which is a little bit awkward. People can see me and hear me, and the neighbor's doing something loud. And this is an awkward angle, but that's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna work with it. It's so nice out. It's been raining for like a week straight. So yesterday was hot and today is hot. So yay. So I thought today would be a good day to talk about Summer Sisters. I got my cute little flowery dress on and some summery feels going on. So this is a reread for me. I read it at least, this would be at least my third time reading it. I read it as a teenager. My aunt suggested it or bought it for me, gave it to me, and I really liked it. And... Uh, I'll just read the first little blurb here to tell you a little bit what it's about. In the summer of 1977, Victoria Leonard's world changed forever when Caitlin Somers chose her as a friend. Dazzling, reckless Caitlin welcomed Vix into the heart of her sprawling, eccentric family, opening doors to a world of unimaginable privilege, sweeping her away to vacations on Martha's Vineyard, a magical windblown island where two friends became summer sisters. So it goes from the age of 12 to 30, so it does cover a large time period, and I am now 32, so it's still kind of relevant. I mean, a majority of it takes place between 12 and 17. It's broken into parts, like these summers, these summers, these summers, and it takes place mostly during the summer, so it's not a lot of like filler stuff. A few like major events might happen throughout the year that are mentioned, but it mostly takes place during the summer. So it takes place between like 12 and 17 and then college years and then as they get out of college and start careers and get married and stuff. Caitlin Summers, like it says, is reckless, dazzling, reckless. She's the beautiful, she's the blonde, typical beauty, outgoing, flirty, always has the boyfriends kind of girl. And Victoria, or Vix, is more the quiet, shy, thoughtful one, more the introverted one, where Caitlin is more the extroverted one. So I definitely take 
after Vic, a lot more Vic. They talk about her mom's like, if I wanted to name you after a cold remedy, I would have. So she always calls her Victoria. But I definitely take after Victoria a lot more than Caitlyn and kind of feeling like dwarfed by the beautiful Caitlyn kind of feelings and stuff. But I, I definitely connected with Victoria throughout the book. And even now, like I said, it goes up until their 30th birthday. So yeah, I can still like connect with it a little bit. And I just, I've always loved the friendship between the two girls, Vix and Caitlin. I guess I grew up with these ideas, like these kind of stories. I grew up with like the Summer Sisters or the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants and books like that and movies and stuff and saw that friendship group and I always wanted that. And I mean, I have one friend on here, well, not on here, in real life. I have this one friend that I've known since I was, we were about 15. We met in, she was in grade 10 and I was in grade 11. And we were still friends to this day. So that's over 15 years later. We're still really good friends and we have a lot of things in common like reading and we both crochet. So that's nice. We both like different teas and stuff. So we have like a lot of things that we can talk about. So that's really nice that we've kept that friendship from... 15 years ago like from high school that doesn't happen a lot and then I have another friend that's like one of my oldest friends that I've known since I was nine and the good thing about those two friends that I just mentioned is their birthdays are April 8th and April 9th so <laughs> it's really easy to remember when their birthdays are yeah I've known her since I was nine and we still we don't have necessarily a lot of the same hobbies in common but we've known each other so long our moms are friends my mom and her grandma are friends they're like a second family kind of thing we don't have necessarily like I said the same hobbies but we still have things to talk about we've just known each other for so long and then I have another friend that again we don't really talk as often but I've known her since I was five and our moms are like best friends still but they don't live close to each other so they don't see each other as much but they're still like one of those longtime friends right like they've known each other since their kids were five years old and now we're in our 30s so <laughs> it's good to have those friends and stuff but as an adult I haven't made those friendships and it's been hard and where I live being part of a church and becoming a mom has definitely opened up doors to become at least acquaintances and maybe not best friends but friends with people in the church and through mom groups and stuff like that but it's really hard to make good long-lasting friendships as an adult i guess i've been feeling a lot more lonely here we've been living here for nine and a half years now and i don't have like a best best friend and any friend i felt like oh i'm pretty close to this person it's just we've gotten so busy i don't work i'm a stay-at-home mom and some of the moms that i know are stay-at-home moms and some have gone back to work so they're busy either working and being a mom or they're busy just being a mom and where we live everyone's husband's schedule is quite a bit different so it's hard to get together sometimes especially with like little kids that are still having nap times and stuff like that a lot of us are starting to move out of that stage now like the moms that I became friends with when my first or second or third were babies well now they're you know eight six seven five years old kind of thing so we're kind of getting out of the nap stage and stuff and now we're starting to be like in school and I go to mops I was going to mops until the coronavirus happened and everyone had to go on like lockdown yeah, it's just hard to keep up with mom friends because of schedules and stuff. And our husband's like, my husband works seven days on, seven off. My one friend up here, her husband works like 14 days on, 14 off. Some husbands work Monday to Friday. So it's all very different. And there's things called like shutdowns here where they shut down some of the plants and do maintenance work. And that's like nonstop work, 18, 19 hours a day for like three months straight. So those moms, they might have time to spend with you, but then when their husbands are home, it's like, no, I need all the time I can with my husband because we've got no time together these three months. Everyone's just schedules and being a mom and being a parent is very difficult. I guess I connected with this friendship as like a kid wanting that friendship and then now as an adult being like I want that friend that's there like all my friends like I said my oldest friends that I've known the longest for the longest and friends that I've that even like my friend that I said I've known for the, over 15 years now we talk like almost every day but she's not here so it's hard to get that in person interaction and stuff like that yeah I guess I'm just missing that this book made me cry and I remembered what happened in it and everything like that I knew it was coming and it still made me cry and I thought it was really good at the end it's very sad but very good as well and I think Judy Bloom did a really good job with this and the friendship group and well not group but friendship couple 
it's written from different people's perspective like mostly you're getting basically victoria's perspective i don't think we really get caitlin's perspective very much but then at the end of after like a couple of chapters or whatever you'll get like phoebe's perspective and abby's perspective so phoebe is caitlin's mom and then abby is like the stepmom and then you have sharky as caitlin's brother so you get the perspective of a couple of different people in it so i like that and it's just like one little page kind of thing but mostly told from Victoria's perspective. I definitely, I give it like a 5 out of 5 because of nostalgia and I think it's well written and it made me cry and just brought up all those feelings of what it's like to have that kind of friendship and wanting that kind of friendship and being thankful for the friends that I do have. Anyways, that is my Summer Sisters quick little review blurb. Like it says it takes place on Martha's Vineyard during the summers. Caitlin's parents are divorced and her mom lives down by where Victoria lives. Can't remember where home base is. She becomes Vix, becomes friends with Caitlin, and Caitlin invites her to summer with her on Martha's Vineyard with her dad. Her dad lives there during, or is there during the summers. It's just their time together and their exploration as kids. They discover the power between their legs when they're like 12. So that was kind of an interesting thing for them to explore together as girls, which was something that I never experimented with the way it is in this book so i remember finding that really curious as a kid or a teenager anyways and then even as adult i wonder like what my kids are going to be doing and how they're going to be exploring their bodies and stuff and with their friends and things like that and then yeah as they get older and they deal with having crushes and liking boys and getting summer jobs and stuff like that and then some of the family stuff that happens with well both their families but especially vix's family her brother he's bound to a wheelchair i think it's like muscular dystrophy or something like that and so there's some things that happen there and just how they navigate all that as friends i definitely recommend it if you're looking for a summer read it's pretty thick but it goes by pretty quickly and it is written more young adult so even though it spans from like 12 to 30 it is more like young adult written so it is a pretty quick read so thank you for watching i hope you're enjoying this beautiful weather or if it is not beautiful weather where you are that you're getting some good reading time thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye